Lizzie demands a seat. Elizabeth Jennings fights for streetcar rights. A literally cultured read aloud. Written by Beth Anderson and illustrated by E.B. Lewis. Lizzie Jennings was in a hurry, a big hurry, the kind of hurry she couldn't hold back. Lizzie's heels ticked off the seconds. If she didn't catch a streetcar right away, the choir would be without an organist. The New York City heat pressed down as Lizzie and her friend Sarah rushed to the corner. At the sight of the horses approaching, Lizzie's hand shot up. The driver pulled over and the women boarded, but the conductor took one look at them and planted himself in the entrance. You'll have to wait for the next car. We can't, said Lizzie. We're late for church. He pointed. There's another car coming for your people. His words stung. This wasn't about empty seats. It was about tradition. A tradition of separate streetcars for blacks and whites. A tradition most people ignored. Usually Lizzie's fine clothes and proper manners earned her a seat on a car reserved for whites. Usually it was up to passengers to object, but not today. This conductor expected her to ride on a car for her people, a car with the sign colored people allowed in this car. Lizzie swallowed hard. I don't have any people. The car's full. The conductor shooed her away. Get off. She eyed empty seats. Despite being born a free black in a free state, she'd never been treated as equal. She'd been rejected, restricted, and refused by schools, restaurants, and theaters. Suddenly, late for church wasn't as important as late for equality. Lizzie stood firm. Passengers murmured. Horses snorted. Pedestrians gathered. Finally, the driver held up the reins. We need to go. Aye, replied the conductor. As he turned to the women, his brogue rolled like thunder. You may go in, but if the passengers raise any objections, you shall go out, or I'll put you out. Lizzie's heart pounded. Her voice broke free. I'm a respectable person, born and raised in this city. She held up a scolding finger. And you are rude to insult a decent person. Get out! The conductor lunged at Sarah and yanked her off the platform. Then he reached for Lizzie. Don't you touch me, she shouted. He seized her arm. Lizzie grabbed the window frame and hung on. He roared at the driver. Fasten your horses. Give me a hand. The two men pried her loose, dragged her across the platform, and dropped her at the curb. But before the driver could snap the horses into action, Lizzie picked herself up and climbed back on the streetcar. The conductor shook with fury. You'll be sorry. He turned to the driver. Go and don't stop till you see a police officer. The whip cracked, the streetcar lurched, and the horses took off. Lizzie looked back at Sarah, faded into the distance. Five blocks later, the conductor hailed an officer. Again, a crowd gathered and watched in silence. Officer, said the conductor, the passengers object to this woman's presence. 
It's my duty to remove her. No one objected, Lizzie said, leaping up. I have rights. The officer forced her off the streetcar. Make your complaint. You'll not get far. Within moments, the clippity-clop of horses' hooves faded and onlookers slipped away. Lizzie stood, catching her breath, while the officer's taunts rang in her ears. She brushed herself off, raised her chin, and straightened her bonnet. Too late and too riled for church, she started home. Footsteps followed. A voice called out, Miss? Startled, she spun around. I saw what happened. Here's my name if you need a witness. Lizzie studied his card and mumbled, Thank you. As she watched him disappear, a flicker of hope sparked. A witness. Someone who recognized her rights. Slowly, she calmed the storm swirling in her mind. This wasn't about her. It was about dignity, about justice, ideas she'd been raised on. Her enslaved grandfather had fought alongside patriots in the Revolutionary War. Her parents were abolitionists, raising money, giving speeches, fighting for free Southern slaves. Lizzie had joined in the fight for equal rights in the North. She attended meetings, she signed petitions, she became a school teacher, determined to educate black children. But that wasn't enough. Blacks were shut out of neighborhoods, jobs, and schools. Nearing home, she glanced at her torn skirt. Clothing could be replaced. Her injuries would heal. Still, injustice remained, year after year after year. There was one place where justice for one could mean justice for all, a courtroom. But if she failed to win, she could make it worse. 13 years before, a black man lost his case for the right to ride. No one had dared try again. Word of Lizzie's treatment at the hands of the conductor spread through the neighborhood and a meeting was scheduled for the next day. At home, stiff and sore, Lizzie recorded every detail of the incident and prepared a statement. At church, people listened to her words. Elizabeth Lizzie Jennings was a respected school teacher and church organist. White passengers in the car had not objected and she had a witness. The people had waited long enough they formed a committee and hired a lawyer. Newspapers printed Lizzie's account. Her father spoke in churches, wrote letters and articles, and appealed for public support. Seven months later, in the chill of winter, Lizzie hurried up the walk to the courthouse. The click of her heels matched her heartbeat as she made her way through the crowd. Stepping into the packed courtroom, Lizzie steeled herself with a silent prayer. She took her seat next to her lawyer, Chester Arthur. The gavel sounded and the case began. Elizabeth Jennings vs. the 3rd Avenue Railroad Company. Arthur described Lizzie's attempt to board the streetcar and the assault by the conductor and the driver. He defended her right to ride. The Third Avenue Railroad Company argued for its right to do what was good for business. Lizzie weighed every word. Finally, the judge reminded the jury to keep in mind the facts as they deliberated. The Third Avenue Railroad Company was responsible for the actions of the driver and the conductor. People of color had the same right to ride as others. Streetcars were required to carry all respectable, well-behaved people. As the jurors filed out, Lizzie studied their faces, one by one. The law seemed clear, 
but Lizzie understood how words could be twisted. Was it respectable to demand her rights? Was it well behaved to fight back? If the jury didn't think so, they could deny her right to ride. At last the jury returned. The gavel sounded and a hush settled over the room. Lizzie's pulse pounded as the judge announced the verdict. Lizzie turned to her lawyer, then took in the crowd, her family, the committee, her friends and neighbors. They had done it. The next day, when the colored people allowed in this car signs on those 3rd Avenue streetcars came down, Lizzie smiled. She knew it was just one ruling against one streetcar company, but it was a beginning. More people needed to step up onto streetcars to test the verdict. And step up, they did. A few days after Lizzie's victory, a woman fought for a seat on an 8th Avenue streetcar. Then it happened again, and again. City after city, decade after decade, for a century, fighting for the right to ride. Men and women, young and old, stepped onto streetcars, trains, and buses, inspired by the strength of those who came before them.